Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Sacred Heart Church as we celebrate the Mass of the second Sunday of Lent. Today's readings begin on page 86. At this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Sharon Mapes. Let us begin by praying our Sacred Heart offering. O Jesus, o Jesus through the Immaculate Heart, Heart of Mary, Mary I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day, in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your sacred heart, salvation of souls, the reparation of sin, the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for peace and justice in the world, the well-being of my loved ones, and the intentions of our Holy Father, the Pope. Amen. Please stand as we begin our Mass and greet our celebrant, Father Matthew. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess yes. to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God, and, and to, to you, you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. In this Mass today, we're going to be praying for the repose of the soul of Shewan Mappes. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly 
by your word, that with spiritual sight may be we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. And so he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no further on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appealed to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man has risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise and honor to you. Today's gospel is beautiful. Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and went up into a mountain 
to show them who he is. They probably knew that Jesus is the Son of God, but that could be a common knowledge that anyone had experience with him throughout his miracles, but not so deep that he's happening today on this mountain. This meeting is not just a vision of Moses, Elijah, and Jesus in between, no. What's happened today is the transfiguration, the manifestation of the glory of God. The divine glory shines from the face of Jesus. He is transfigured before them. He changes in appearance when he prays to God. And then, the voice of the Father from the clouds reveals who Jesus is. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. God the Father reveals that Jesus is not only man, but also he is God. Jesus, in the other hand, reveals to his disciples what we will see at the resurrection, the glory of God. Jesus met with Moses and Elijah. Moses represented the law and Elijah the prophets. They were both the main figures of the Old Testament. They met with Jesus to discuss how the word of God was going to bring to its fulfillment. As Jesus said to his disciples, I have, no, I have not come to abolish the law and the prophet, but rather to fulfill them. That means to offer to God an emblemish sacrifice and to gain for us once for all, life everlasting. The transfiguration experience, my brothers and sisters, was important not just for Jesus, but even more for his beloved disciples and for us. Peter, James, and John, their eyes were opened to catch a glimpse of Jesus in his glory, and their ears were opened to hear the divine confirmation of Jesus' identity as beloved son, to whom they were enjoyed to listen. Captivated by the experience, Peter wants to remain on the mountain in the exalted company of Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. However, this is not to be. The luminous moment passes and the three disciples find themselves alone with Jesus, who warns them not to tell anyone what they had witnessed until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. We are told that the disciples observed his warning faithfully but continued to reflect on what they had seen and heard, wondering what it all meant. One of the intentions of this vision is to strengthen the faith of the apostles. It is because a few days earlier, Jesus taught them that he's going to suffer and to die in Jerusalem. My brothers and sisters, this fulfillment could not be realized without a sacrifice. Jesus paid this price by pouring out his blood on the cross. Our glory cannot be understood 
apart from his sacrifice. Glory, as you know, is recognized when it is a result of sacrifice. Better than I, you know, no one honors someone who was just lucky by purchasing a winning lottery ticket. Someone is honored when his success is the result of a hard work. His glory is due to his sacrifice. The athlete is honored not just for the event, but for the training and sacrifice that gave him the ability to perform and to gain the medal. You reward your children not only for the good grades on their report cards, but also for the sacrifice and the hard work they have done that led to those grades. In the same way, God will give us a share in his glory, not only because we are Christians, but also because we have persevered in faith and we have worked faithfully in such a way from sacrifice to glory. As we go forward through this Lenten season, we do penance in our lives from selfish desires in order to serve others. This is the path to glory for Christian people, a path full of sacrifice. My dear brothers and sisters, we Christians, we are happy because like the disciples on the mountain of the transfiguration, we are called to change completely by his holiness to do the extra mile that we could experience the joy and happiness that is to come. That change must come from within, an inner revolution of attitudes and values. This is the greatest testimony that we can give about our changed life. No one stays at the mountain top forever. Sooner or later, we must descend to go back to realities and make our changed life a testimony for others so that they may have tested by their own this deep experience. For God's will is to give us a share in his glory that we can feel what Peter has felt. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus invites us today to the mountain top to experience, to live true faith, this transfiguration power of his heart and his love. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. My dear brothers and sisters, with confidence, let us offer to God our needs. For our church, that in our prayer and work together, the earth shall find blessing in us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Blair, all the priests, deacons, and religious, may they be strengthened by our prayers as they continue to spread the message of God's love throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. For nations and people, that they may work together to recreate our world in the justice and peace of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For the sick, the suffering, and the dying, that they may know in our care and compassion of them the healing presence of the risen one. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. For all of us gathered here, that we might always be open to turn to Jesus who intercedes for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve our country, our first responders, those who have died, and those who suffer in any type of pain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we pray for this weekend, especially the repose of the soul of Sharon Mates, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book and those in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Almighty God, Almighty Father, may your spirit of compassion and peace transfigure us and our world into the image of Jesus, the risen Christ, in whose name we offer these prayers, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Food of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Food of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and control for they be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice on this day be pleasing to you, O Lord. Watch me from my sins, cleanse me from my sins.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice unto your hand, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give strength to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do full, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, brought and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard Blair, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and especially today, Sharon Mappis, and all who have died in your mercy, Justin, Reggie, Theodore, Isaac, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us. All we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, from a distance, let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We, we receive, as we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers, even now, of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father Matthew will be available for confessions each Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. Stations of the Cross will be held each Friday at 7 p.m. During the month of March, we ask you to help us collect diapers for the Bloomfield Social Services Diaper Bank. Don't forget to get your orders in for our Friday family meatless meals. Thanks to all our volunteers. This coming week, our head chefs are Cal DePippo and Beth Ellison, making minestrone soup and sandwiches. This Friday, we deliver meals to the McKinney Shelter. We need donations of ham, vegetables, potatoes, and cupcakes and cookies. Don't forget to check out Deacon Santos on our Sacred Heart Facebook or YouTube channels. This week, he discusses the Sacred Heart of Jesus and St. Margaret Mary. Please call or email the parish office with your Friday meal orders and if you can donate food for the McKinney Shelter. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go far, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Holy Michael, Holy Michael the, the Archangel, Angel. Defend us in the battle. Be, be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do your prayers of the heavenly host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits wander throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls.